What is good, y'all? Y'all know what it is. John B. Saunders here. In today's video, I'm talking about design systems and how you can leverage them in your website design and development process to really crush it and provide a quality product for your client. Let's go ahead and do this. break down what design systems are and how they function in regards to your website. So what I've done is I've pulled up Dribbble and I'm just showing you design systems in real time so you can get a visual aspect of what these things do. And these are examples here like Linux and Alloy. These are examples of, of pretty detailed and robust design systems. And so what these do is present a collection of all the UI resources that a design company may have. So that can include code snippets, development resources, code, documentation, page screenshots, image examples, branding guidelines, tools, everything that's a cohesive part of how that brand functions in the digital landscape. And so it really just helps the entire team have a central workflow to work from when they're creating designs and digital assets for clients. So think of it as like your brand Bible, but even more in your whole brand. So it can include code and other components that are outside of the design system. So let's click one for example. This one looks really cool. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you our example and a few uh, big agency and big client examples just to give you an idea. And the main reason you want to do this is to one, have a central location for all of these assets that the client or your team can access. And then what this also does is if you offer web design services is a great value add on for the things that you already provide. So here's an example here. You can see that they have different icons, color palettes, right? Some custom icons here. And again, it doesn't have to be this robust depending on the project. You can do a simplified version, which I'll show you. We just did for our rebrand, but ultimately it's every component as a part of your, your workflow in your business. So this is an example from Dribble. Let's look at another really cool one here as well. This one by Felipe or Philippe, I apologize. This one looks really great, but you can see he even has buttons, triggers, enters using like a Google font here, uh, the different color palettes that are included, icons, right? So now any part of the team can access this file and be able to make digital assets like web pages, Facebook ads, or whatever they're working on. So here's another example from Material Design. This is a really great website that has just design guidance and code, and it can show you like different components based on what you need to jumpstart your project. So if I look at Material Design Guidelines and I click this, it's gonna show me the breakdown in a cohesive kind of version. And so this is from the goats at Google themselves. Uh, this is what they use to really develop their, their, um, their entire design system. So if they're using material articles, these are some of the system icons that are consistent with the brand, typesetting, and we can click these to learn more in regards to the type scale, how this should generate and how this should be applied to an overall brand. Now this is a pretty robust um, <laughs> design system, but um, this allows other brands and individuals to have a strong foundation to build on while you're building out your brand. Another example is Shopify, as we know, is probably the biggest e-commerce platform out there, period. This is a, a look at their color system, their typography, different illustrations that they have. And some of the bigger brands actually build a, a full website or, or um, dashboard with all these components to help their team members be able to make all these assets that are needed. So as you can see, we have colors here. We can push illustrations and it'll have a specific illustration style. And then a lot of times with design systems, you'll have specific principles and you have to stay within the confines of those principles. So with illustrations, always be useful. Keep it in the family. Right. So you want to make sure that the cons there's consistency between the illustrations as well as style. Right. And here's the color palette that Shopify is looking for. Here's the overall shape, sizes, space. So it's really good to familiarize yourself with these links. I'll, I'll link these in the description as well so you can check these out in your own time. But ultimately, this is a great way to really understand how you should visualize and create your designs. This is another one, uh, Atlassian is a great one for looking at components and patterns, as well as pulling information like mission, personality, and promise. And so you can scroll through these. They have an entire library. They even have a Figma library as a part of their team. But a lot of these platforms are like internal for teams. 
to be able to access all these files and documents in one central location. So you can see they have design principles. They even have their own Figma library, right? Which is probably internal. A lot of these are locked, right? Because these are more so for internal team members, but this gives you a visual idea of what to look for when you're creating your design systems. And of course, the goats of minimalism and clean, efficient design, Apple. Uh, this is Apple's uh, human interface guideline. So this is in-depth info and UI resources for designing great apps that integrate with Apple. So if you want to create an app that has Apple design principles, very centralized, clean, efficient, you can follow these breakdowns to really learn more about what they provide. So you can click here to read the guidelines. I'm just going to let that load up for a sec. And we're going to choose uh, Mac OS just because Mac OS, because, um, you know, we use that so often. And so what you can do is you can look at app architecture, full screen mode. It'll show you what that looks like. It'll provide tips and specific things as a part of that design system. So you can make sure you're staying in line with those, like we said, principles. You can also look at user interaction, how users enter data based on Apple's principles. So if you're designing an app or doing a UI or UX for an app, you can leverage a lot of these tools to help you get that job done efficiently. So with that said, this gives you an understanding of design systems. Now let me show you a real time example of what that looks like. So right now I'm in Figma. Uh, this is our main platform for how we collaborate and work as a team. We're actually doing a redesign of our main agency site, uh, five, four digital. So this is kind of a really centralized and this is a really simple version of our brand guideline. So this includes a full logo mock-up or lockup, a secondary lockup, which can be like a, a secondary version. Um, the different icons on, on backgrounds, color palette, and then our typ typography, which is Satoshi. Now, to make this even elaborate, more elaborate, what we've done is we've created a design system based on these principles. And you can see that here in our high fidelity wireframe. Here's all the main pages here, but then here's the design system we use to cultivate that look and feel. So as you can see, we have the same color palette, the same typography. And let me zoom in here so you all can see this a little bit better. So what we like to do is break down the typography by the different heading types as well as paragraph. And then we also provide the different sizes, right? This is regular 20 point font, um, zero pixel letter spacing, right? So zero pixels between each one. We haven't maximized that and done anything with kerning in regards to that design. I can go here and I can look at the color palettes that we use. What happens if you hover over a link or if that link is disabled? as well as hover elements on the site. So now our team going into this can say, okay, I know what color palette to use. I'm building a new page. I know what assets to use to get the job done. And then the last part is um, all of our icons. So we have branding, design, and dev, and these are our custom built icons for all the services that we offer. So this carries over into all these different components, right? If we're doing um, our proposals, right? You can see our proposals here. Now it has the same color palette, the same look and feel. We're using the same icons as we use in the design system. So everything stems back from that design system that we've created. Also, if I go back here, I have social media assets here that all follow that same continuity based on this um, design system. So um, this is probably the easiest and simplest way to get it done. Like you can literally just have three pages where you have, um, you know, your main typography, your color palette here, links, buttons, and then site icons. And then this can be as elaborate as you need it to be. So we actually uh, got a UI kit from an amazing designer. Uh, his name is Jordan. He provided a UI kit called um, Untitled UI. And this is a huge design system. I'll tag his, um, his info below as well so you can check that out. Um, so he has a free version and he has like a paid version, which is like $99, but trust me, it's absolutely worth it. Um, let that load up for a second. It might take uh, a few minutes. So just to give you like an example, right? He has, I mean, colors, typography, let me show you all icons. I mean, so many robust resources in this design system and you know, you can see components, Badges, I, you know, I don't want to give you <laughs> the full rundown, but this is just an example of a very robust and detailed design system. But again, I just want you all to know that you don't have to go that elaborate, especially if it's like a smaller brand or a smaller startup. You can always scale up your design systems, but it's always good to have a starting point and something basic that you can use to really get the job done. So again, typography, 
color palette, links, buttons, your central site icons. And again, you can get these site icons from a company, a company that you purchase, like Flat Icon or Shutterstock. Uh, but ultimately, you want to bring those into your design system so you can start to build outward. So last thing I want to show you is what an example looks like once you create this design system. So now that that's created, now we have our website design here that we've been working on uh, for the last few weeks. So this is our agency site. As you can see there's a big gray box here. This is for a video that we're going to add. But now you look at this and you see that the typography, the, font, the, the design, the icons, the color palette all match the design system. So now what's great about this is you have a designer and you can have a team of designers all working on a particular project working on different components, but you still have that consistent look across the board. And that's the main thing I wanted to get across in this video. Again, uh, this was a great, great opportunity to be able to show you how this is done. If you have comments below, let me know. Thank you, fam. Appreciate every single like, view, and comment. If you have questions, drop them below. Also, tell me what design system you're working on first. I will see y'all next week. And on the flip side, peace.